This video is brought to you by me. For $1 a month, you can support the channel directly and help me keep doing what I love. Thanks for watching and supporting. The original Crazy Taxi is arguably one of the most iconic driving-based arcade games of all time. The audio design alone is enough to cement this game into players' heads. Whether it's the announcer yelling at you to come on over and have some fun with Crazy Taxi, or the booming punk rock of the offspring's All I Want, the sheer noise of this arcade machine really filled a room. But while the premise for the game was enough to suck quarters from the pockets of arcade goers, it isn't until you get to spend a lot of the time with the game consecutively that you start to realize the underlying message of the game, turning it into a satire and commentary of the gig economy. Hey, hey, come on over, have some fun with Crazy Taxi! Yeah, 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 yeah! Crazy Taxi's goal is simple. Choose a cab driver and set off into the streets of San Francisco to get as many passengers to their destinations as quickly as possible to maximize the amount of money you earn before time runs out or the in-world equivalent of your shift ending. Delivering passengers quickly adds more time to the clock, giving you an opportunity to make more money. You're rewarded for driving recklessly, taking jumps to get big air, weaving in and out of traffic, the passengers throwing tip money at you the whole time, racking up hundreds of dollars per fare. But now let's talk about that soundtrack for a while. It's an incredibly important part of this game for a variety of reasons. Like I said in the intro, this soundtrack contributes to the punk rock personality of the game. It's one of the reasons people adore this game so much, and later re-releases of the console ports are docked serious points for not bringing the licensed music back. There is something so nostalgic for me about seeing Axel's cab flying down the San Francisco hills as the offspring screams, yeah, 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 yeah. That opening attract mode cinematic is laser etched in my mind's eye and will be until the end of time. But there's another facet that the soundtrack really adds to the experience that I didn't realize or appreciate until recently. It captures the angst and frustration of the gig economy. It's not something you notice immediately or even in your first few play sessions, probably because you're only really focused on the gameplay and grabbing hold of the game's wild physics. But as you play the game more and more, you begin to get more comfortable and can relax a bit, which allows you to listen to the music and learn the words to the seven songs included on the soundtrack. Every single song is about the frustration with the minimum wage lifestyle, the rich versus the poor, and the world's deck of cards being stacked against the people low on the totem pole. Take for instance the intro song All I Want, probably the most remembered song from the entire series. That song is literally all about your job sucking the life out of you to the point where your home life is a wreck and you're forced to forgo the finer things life has to offer for the sake of surviving the next cycle of bills. And if you don't believe me, that's the lyrics. Way Down the Line, also by The Offspring, is about the cyclical nature of society, the world you inherit, the one being the one you leave behind. And I don't want to beat a dead horse here by picking apart every single line of every single song, I think you get it. So while the game is blowing your eardrums with this angsty music, you're flying down the streets trying as hard as you can to pad your pockets before you can't anymore. And if you've ever worked a crappy job before, you can relate to that feeling. I worked plenty of dead-end jobs filling quotas that didn't benefit employees or customers in any way, simply checking boxes for the sake of productivity. There's a certain camaraderie that builds in the trenches, the war less between outperforming co-workers and more between you and the corporate stooges who haven't had to sell a pre-order for a game a year away, or even something as simple as activating a gift card. But knowing you're working a job with no upward mobility or benefits or even a pat on the back most of the time gives you a certain sense of freedom in a way. A freedom to bend the rules and make the job worth your own while. You're expendable to the company, but the job is expendable to you, which means you might as well enjoy yourself. Crazy Taxi is an allegory for that freedom to make a crappy job work for you. In this game, the goal isn't about the number of passengers you pick up. No, your real cash comes from tips. As your cabbie of choice, you pick up tourists, shoppers, and business folk who are yelling at you to drive faster, giving you mere seconds to make it to your destination, usually a major fast food chain like KFC or some designer shoe store, where they will no doubt leave your cab, ready to make the restaurant or retail worker's life miserable as they demand their service move faster, just like they did to you. But since your only goal is to rack up as much cash as possible to pay yourself, you kind of have to indulge their desire for speed. This results in a mad dash to the finish line as you try to feed the passengers adrenaline by swerving close to other vehicles and launching your yellow hunk of metal into the sky as often as possible to get them to throw tip money at you. You are breaking every law of the road as you go, but to make the most of your shift, you have to, 
especially because the cab company is going to make their cut whether it means you take a loss or not. And now it's time for armchair law sessions with under 10 hours. After doing some research into taxi laws and practices from both now and when the game came out, I learned that while most cab drivers essentially rent their taxis each shift, paying a price for use as well as not having to worry about insurance, maintenance, in some cases some drivers do own their vehicles. They pay a reduced fee to the cab company they drive for so they can still take dispatches, but the insurance and maintenance on the vehicle falls on their shoulders. Looking at the custom license plates on the cabs from the game, they say sexy sis and only 777. I'm gonna posit these drivers own their own vehicles, which means they are paying out of pocket to keep their cabs insured and road safe. Meaning every time you smash into a wall and scratch the paint, or bend an axle going over a jump, BD Joe, Gus, Axel, and Gina are all responsible for fixing that damage, or they risk being barred from taking dispatches. And if that seems like a big financial investment, it is. Paying for shifts, paying to rent a car, or to keep up the car you already own is a lot of money out of your pocket as it is. But the situation also becomes more of a strain when you learn that back then and even now, in most places, cab drivers are considered independent contractors, very close to the same category as self-employed. That means the cab companies are not required to extend benefits to their full-time employees. The financial burden is really starting to stack up here, and those wildly high fares are starting to look smaller and smaller. Okay, so you might be thinking these laws are pretty outdated, and that they don't really affect people who drive for a living, and, well, that's not entirely true. Because while the cab industry has shifted and flowed in confusing ways, the current Uber and Lyft driver situation mirrors the status of cab drivers in the early 2000s when Crazy Taxi came out. Full-time workers are once again being denied benefits due to a misclassification over what a rideshare driver is relating to how these employees view their workers. In a big vote in 2020, Proposal 22 in California ruled that Uber and Lyft drivers were not going to be reclassified as employees, and instead will be solely independent contractors. Uber, Lyft, and other rideshare and app services spent $200 million to make a persuasive campaign supporting the proposal, a record amount of money spent on California legislation. Since the yes vote that reaffirmed these workers as independent contractors, the passage has resulted in pay cuts according to the drivers who drove before and after the vote. And then as a result, Uber CEO Dana Khosrowshahi said the company will work with governments across the country to enact similar laws for each individual state. The workers were caught between a rock and a hard place considering Uber and Lyft threatened to leave California altogether if they were forced to reclassify their drivers as employees. So much like the cab drivers from back in the day and in a lot of cases today, Rideshare drivers are on their own for a lot of the financial burden of their chosen vocation. The big company strong-armed the little guy once again, stripping away their right to benefits like healthcare and paid time off. All of this is to say that Crazy Taxi remains a timeless representation of the grind for the almighty dollar, especially from the perspective of the hard-working people on the bottom floor who are stuck in the gig cycle. It is the perfect embodiment of having a crappy dead-end job you hope won't last forever, so you may as well milk it while you can. It also lets you put yourself in the shoes of someone whose entire livelihood depends on the money they take home shift to shift. So the next time you play Crazy Taxi and you feel that angst you felt when you were waiting tables in college or working that retail job at a game store in high school or that job you can't seem to move on from, put that pedal to the floor and drive like hell. Because sometimes it's all you can do. Thank you so much for watching my video, I really appreciate it. If you like the video, please consider hitting the like button. What's your fondest memory of Crazy Taxi and what's the worst job you ever worked? Let me know in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more videos like this, why don't you subscribe to the channel and send the video to someone you think would appreciate it. And lastly, if you want to support the channel directly, you can go to the Patreon link in the description. For $1 a month, you can get access to exclusive videos you can't get anywhere else and early access to my newest videos. I want to take a moment to thank my higher tier patrons, Andrew Elmore, Andrew Lang, Just Jessica, and 8-Bit Jesus. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.